Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you could just keep yourself on mute. Um, we have invited the uh, California State Parks, David Garcia um, from that agency to talk about careers with their department. All right, perfect, perfect. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'll introduce myself, our team, a little bit about California State Parks, uh, and what kind of careers you all could uh, potentially work. Um, so we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, again, my name is David Garcia from the Workforce Planner and Recruitment Office. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, so I work with California State Parks, and we are a full-service recruitment office. So on our team, we have Sochi Prok, myself, Forest Gardens, Laura Estrada, um, and Yolanda Ramirez. Um, and we provide full service recruitment opportunities. So what does this mean? This means that we will help you with one on one consultations. If you want to set up a Zoom call or a phone call, um, we will look at your application or resume. Um, we provide career guidance, mock interviews. Our team has been actively doing mock interviews this week for some of our seasonal applicants um, to help prepare them. Um, and of course, we can give you tips for applying. Now, with that, we have a career center at our headquarters. Um, we are open every Tuesday and Thursday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, it is California State Parks Career Center, but it's also shared with California Department of Energy, CAL FIRE, California Department of Fish and Wildlife, um, and a couple other agencies. So stop 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, and one of the recruiters from the agencies I mentioned uh, can assist you. Maybe it's show you what jobs we have available, speak to you about where your background would fit. Um, now, of course, our team is always available to set up meetings or answer questions. You can reach us recruiting at parks.ca.gov. Um, and down here, I'm not sure if you all can see this, but livetheparkselect.com is our jobs page. So that has featured opportunities, including a really cool opportunity um, to do outdoor recreation and camping. That's on the first slide. Um, and we also have a list of different exams available um, and a list of our full vacancies, which I'd encourage you to explore during this presentation. All right, so in this uh, fairly short presentation, uh, I'm going to go over kind of like who we are at California State Parks. Um, we'll go over steps to apply for a state job, which is basic. We aren't going to get too in depth. Uh, and then, of course, we'll go over some tips for applying and featured opportunities. What career paths could you even take at California State Parks? Um, and then at the end, uh, we can get to some questions. We'd really uh, appreciate it if you put any questions in the chat and um, and Princess can kind of kind of help me out towards the end and and I can answer any of those questions you have. All right. So a little bit about California State Parks. You can see these images here. We have the largest state park system in the United States. So we have 280 state parks throughout California. Um, you can see we've got Redwood um, State Parks, we've got state beaches, we've got beaches, uh, uh, parks in the mountains, historical monuments, um, the state capitol and the railroad museum are fairly close to you all. Um, so we have a lot of, lot of opportunity um, for working outdoors positions. Um, and we have hundreds of classifications that you can choose from. Of course, we are also protecting our precious resources. So we care about the environment, whether you're working as an environmental scientist um, or just working for the agency in general. Uh, we are always working on ways to protect our precious uh, natural and cultural resources. Um, so it's a very, very awesome agency to work for. Uh, and so another reason to work for us is the compensation, the benefits. Maybe you've heard from other state agencies. Um, you know, one of the, the perks to working for California State Parks or Department of Fish and Wildlife or CAL FIRE, one of these state agencies, is this credits, the retirement, the medical, the vision. Um, you know, you have dental benefits for yourself and your family. Um, you know, we get, we get great, um, you know, compensated time off 
you know, I know I've only been here three years, but every month I get 14 hours of, of time off I can take, which is equivalent to about a month paid vacation per year. Uh, and that goes up based on how many years you've worked here. So there's a lot of, lot of perks. Uh, one example I do like to use is that um, my girlfriend is a, a nurse at Kaiser and uh, my copay and my benefits with Kaiser are actually better than hers. Um, so that's a, a pretty, pretty good example of, of how good the benefits can actually be, um, which you don't see normally on paper when you're looking at a job. All right, so another thing, we're very inclusive. We have millions of people come from all over the world and come visit our park. So our team is actively creating a, a, a workforce that's reflective of California's diverse population. Um, and that can, to kind of speak to that, if you ever get a chance to visit a park, go interact with the staff. Maybe it's a state park equipment operator or ranger or, uh, you know, an environmental scientist, whoever it is, if you see them in uniform, go interact and you'll see how friendly they are, uh, very inclusive. Um, you know, everyone, you know, from the top down is very inclusive. We want all kinds of people, people coming to our parks. Um, and uh, can, to kind of speak to that, if you're bilingual, maybe you speak another language. Um, that's huge. That's a huge benefit. We have a lot of non-English speaking visitors come. Um, and we're very proud that we have staff that can actually uh, communicate uh, and, and that are bilingual. Um, the other part, too, is we're improving the lives of others. You may or may not be aware, but being outdoors in green spaces, you know, around the trees and the fresh air, it's really, really good for your mental and your physical health. Um, so of course, when you're working for parks, you're helping to improve the lives of others. Um, and there's all sorts of outdoor recreation opportunities um, for people to enjoy. You know, I didn't mention, but we all, we have off-road vehicle parks and, you know, I didn't mention our state beaches, but it was just a lot, a lot of ways that you can help people get outdoors, improve their health, uh, and just be happy to be getting exercise and breathing that fresh air. All right, moving forward. So these are real basic steps, but I do want to quickly and briefly review them. Uh, the three steps to working for a uh, state of California agency, such as California State Parks, uh, the first one is to create that Cal Careers account. I'm sure some of you have heard of this. Uh, this is the state hiring system. It's where you can create a uh, You can upload your work experience, possibly your education experience, and you can save it in a template. Um, I love it because I know when I create an application, one, I don't like to handwrite things. I have really messy handwriting uh, so I can type it. And two, I can save it. I can work on it for an hour. You know, go take a break, maybe come back the next day and then work on it again. So it's great to create those application templates in Cal Careers. Uh, and of course, you can search for jobs and exams. Now, what is an exam? Any full time job, you have to take the exam. Now, we call this an assessment at California State Parks because many of these are actually assessments, right? Where it's going to ask you based on your training and your experience, your TNA. How much experience you have? A, B, C, D. Uh, I have zero to 12 months. I have 12 to 24 months, that sort of thing. So some are very simple self-assessments you can take online. Others you may need to go to a testing center uh, and do a handwritten uh, assessment. Um, now, keep in mind, this is only for full-time jobs. I will speak to some uh, seasonal part-time jobs that you can apply without an assessment, um, but for full-time jobs, you do have to take the assessment. Uh, now, our team is always happy to assist. So if there's a job you're interested in and you're like, where do I take the assessment? Reach out to us, recruiting at parks.ca.gov. We're more than happy to tell you, hey, here's the assessment, send you a link, or say, hey, the assessment opens in a few months, um, or just kind of give you the most updated information that we have. Um, of course, number three, once you take the assessment, Unless you're, you know, maybe it's a seasonal job. You can go right in and you can apply. As I already mentioned, livetheparkslife.com is our jobs page. Uh, and you can find the details for each position on the job bulletin. Um, so what does that mean? The bulletin will have the hiring manager's phone number. It'll have the hours that the job is working. Um, it'll have the minimum qualifications. Um, it'll have the location of the job. 
Um, so definitely want to explore the job bulletin. And um, we're going to go ahead and keep it moving. All right, a few tips. I've already mentioned this, but reach out to our team. We're happy to help recruiting at parks.ca.gov. Also apply, apply, apply to all the assessments and vacancies that interest you. You know, don't just apply to one job. You know, if you want to work at parks, apply to three, four, five different jobs. Put those applications in. Uh, and for each type of job, create a different application. So if you're applying uh, and you want to apply to an office technician job, uh, which is entry level in the office generally, then you create one template for that. And then maybe for a seasonal park aid, you're going to create a different template. I want that extra information to stand out, including any volunteer experience. So if you're like, well, I, I've never done this before. Well, think of anything that you've done. Maybe it involved, uh, you know, gardening outside or, you know, uh, um, volunteering, coaching your nephew's soccer team. Anything you would think of that's a volunteer experience, add that to your application. Um, reach out to the contact listed on the bulletin. I just mentioned that that's the hiring manager for the position. Uh, and try a seasonal job to start your career. I'll go over what types of seasonal jobs you can apply to and what they each do later in the presentation. Um, and as I've mentioned, explore livetheparkslife.com. If you're completing an application, fill it out completely. Don't just put a one sentence, this is what I did in my past job. Fill that thing out. Put a couple paragraphs per um, you know, section when it's asking for your experience. Um, and send your application in by the date. Be very patient. Uh, and if we have any veterans, we offer the veterans preference benefit, meaning if you are a U.S. military veteran, uh, all you need is your DD-214 and one page application. You submit it to CalHR and they'll add it to your CalCareers account. So if you take an exam, you get at least 70%, um, then you are automatically in the number one ranking. So it's a great benefit to our uh, military veterans. Um, and we do offer the elite benefit for anyone that is uh, disabled in any way. Um, it's a way to um, kind of bypass the traditional assessment exam system uh, and get evaluated while on the job. All right, so we want to go over career options. What do you even offer? What are some types of jobs that you offer at California State Parks? Well, one of the first ones that I want to mention is our facilities and maintenance division. It's huge. We have, as I mentioned, 280 parks. Uh, you know, we've got a staff of over 6,000 throughout California. Uh, and you can see in the picture to the left and some of these photos, there's a lot of opportunity to work outdoors and help clean, build, restore, and protect our parks. Uh, some of these classifications include our park maintenance chiefs at each park, our park maintenance supervisors where you're overseeing a team, uh, and then a, a maintenance worker one, maintenance worker two. Generally, that's journey level for someone that has a, a you know, little bit of experience. Uh, and then entry level, entry level would be a park maintenance assistant, which is, you know, these are all full-time career positions. We also have groundskeepers, park landscape technicians, skilled laborers. Uh, we are actively recruiting for our state park equipment operators. Uh, these operate uh, D6 and D7 bulldozers in uh, really rough terrain. Uh, it's a generally for parks, it's a journey level. So you have to have at least two years of experience and a class A uh, license. Um, then we also have heavy equipment mechanics, electricians, uh, a few automobile mechanics, uh, and aquatic pest control technicians. It's a great, great way to get going uh, and have a long career working outdoors. Uh, one other thing I want to mention, the seasonal job, the best way to start in facilities and maintenance is as a maintenance aid. Any maintenance aid position you can apply to right now online, no exam needed, uh, and potentially begin working outdoors in a park uh, as soon as a, a few weeks. Um, so please explore those maintenance aids. That's the best way to start your career in our facilities and maintenance. The Park and Recreation Specialist Series. All right, this is a really cool classification. Um, what do you do? Like, what does that even mean? Well, first of all, the exciting part is that 
you can take the exams online. They're self-assessments now as of a few months ago. They didn't used to be. Now it's on the carousel, livetheparkslife.com. Okay, well, what do you do? Well, you can do grant administration, um, where basically a lot of people don't know this, but we're developing about half a billion dollars worth of community parks, right? So if you're looking out in your local community and you're like, man, there is no place for kids to play on the playground or there's no soccer fields for them. Well, what we're doing is we're working with communities like that and giving out a half a billion dollars of grant money per year to develop those parks. Now, as a park and rec specialist, you can be a project officer and oversee that process. So you advance, um, you teach the community how to apply, you then score their application. And then sometimes those parks actually get the grant money, can develop those new community parks. And then you go back with a checklist to make sure that they've actually developed the park as they said they would. Really cool program. Uh, and here in Sacramento, our community engagement division has quite a bit of project officers that get hired throughout the year. Now, entry level, generally you have to have equivalent to a bachelor's degree. Uh, if you have a number of years um, but don't have a bachelor's degree, um, occasionally, you know, you can use that work experience to count um, and to, to qualify to be a park and rec specialist series. Generally, I believe it's around eight years of experience in qualify. Uh, but it's a great, great classification um, that you can work. Okay, state park interpreters. So you may think, well, we get to oh, interpreter. Oh, oh, cool. I'm bilingual. I can be an interpreter. Well, our interpreters are a little bit different. Our interpreters interpret education. They interpret cultural resource information. They interpret history. And then they take that information and present it to the public. So you can kind of see in some of these photos, we have a ports program. So it's a, a top left. You can see Eduardo Gonzalez, a friend of mine from Millerton Lake. He um, presents to the classroom with that, uh, with the um, iPad. And he does in-classroom presentations on his park. Um, and it's a really cool program. So we work with students um, and, you know, you're a storyteller. Uh, we have uh, up north, um, I believe it's called Sioux Meg. And uh, they are working with local Native American tribes and have multiple Native Americans in there telling their Native American history about the park. Um, so, you know, proud of is we're really working with Native American tribes, renaming parks and telling uh, the story, um, you know, as it should be told. Um, so really, really proud to be working for parks. And that's one reason. All right, environmental scientists, look at this job. I took a few of these photos because, um, man, what a cool job they work. Uh, so environmental scientists, generally you're gonna collect samples out in the field and take those samples back to headquarters or your district office, uh, and you're gonna pile data and basically say, hey, you know, this is the data that shows, you know, that we need to clean this area or, you know, whatever the case the studies are, uh, you, you use that, that data to advise policymakers and, and to protect human health. Um, you know, the environmental scientists at the bottom, they spend three days a week out on the Delta, just those two and out collecting samples and uh, good time and, and enjoying the outdoors and also, you know, helping protect the Delta. Um, so the minimum qualifications generally is to have a science related bachelor's degree to be an environmental scientist. Um, and, you know, again, a number of years of experience can also qualify you. Um, but generally, it's going to be a biology major or a plant science major. Um, you know, even I believe public health can even fit in there. Um, so generally, those are the minimum qualifications. All right, now the analyst series, okay? Generally, these are broad jobs that are across the board. So maybe some of you have heard of them. We currently have three, um, at least two, I know, office technician jobs in Sacramento, okay? So if you're the type of person that's like, all right, I work hard, um, I can get in, I can do this. You don't need a bachelor's degree. Find your office technician jobs. Um, we have multiple openings. All you have to do is take the online exam and you can apply. It's entry level, okay? 
Um, you could be doing a number of things. Now, I want to mention at Parks, I've even seen some office technicians where you are in charge of all the volunteers within a park, right? So some of our office technician jobs can be very unique, but that's generally entry level throughout the state of California. The next one is staff services analyst. That's kind of the next step in the career path uh, for the state of California. Uh, and we have three openings right now. Um, and one of them is incredibly cool. You basically spend the summer working with nonprofits and teaching kids that have never camped before how to camp, how to make a s'more, uh, how to enjoy the outdoors, how to kayak. Uh, and that opening is the first slide on livetheparkslife.com. And that has an all. Uh, another job that you can work, I believe, is in the director's office, um, doing more administrative jobs as a staff services analyst. Uh, and then we get into the journey level, the, you know, it's government speak, but associate governmental program analyst. We currently have one available. Uh, it's considered a legislative analyst. So, you know, if you've got quite a bit of years of experience or possibly even, you know, some legislative background, maybe you studied, you know, um, um, political science in, in college, um, this could be a great position for you. Um, and it is at our headquarters, okay? And that's the Associate Governmental Program Analyst. Then we have, you know, positions in our accounting and our budgets, like a, a accounting and budget analyst. Um, in our HR, a great position. HR would be a personnel specialist, okay? I don't believe you need any type of bachelor's degree, anything like that. Uh, personnel specialist has an online exam. You can take start applying to our agency to work in human resources, uh, but also other agencies as well. Uh, and these are just some of the analyst type of positions you can work. All right, so we have rangers at California State Parks, of course. Everyone says, you know, uh, you know, Smokey the Bear and the rangers and that sort of thing, right? Um, well, we have, uh, you know, our rangers and lifeguards. So they are our law enforcement. They protect our parks. Um, they keep visitors safe. Um, but they also educate visitors. So, you know, they're not just mean old law enforcement, you know, they're that friendly face that will tell you all about the birds or the wildlife or anything you have a question about, but, you know, they'll also keep the park safe in case, you know, there's violence in the park or, you know, um, a threat to, to public safety. So we have an in-house cadet academy. So that means it's uh, fully sponsored and it's, Northern California, once you apply and you get in, uh, you know, you're a full-time state employee, you're getting a thousand dollars a month for housing, you're getting forty-one dollars a day for food, and you spend eight months, Monday through Friday, getting trained on how to be a ranger or a lifeguard. Um, so we have one of the only agencies in the United States where our lifeguards, state park peace officer lifeguards, are actually post-certified. So they carry firearms, they have jurisdiction throughout California. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, you're so much more than law enforcement working as a state park peace officer ranger, you're educating visitors, you're, um, you know, doing all sorts of campfire talks, and there's all sorts of ways to um, learn this information, right, take courses, and then uh, use that information to educate the public. All right, so where would you start? You can kind of see some of these photos. Uh, man, everybody's just so happy to be working as as a uh, seasonal job. And it's it's because of our culture, right? We have a great work culture. So what can you do? Where to start? The best way to start is to start as a park aid. Okay, a park aid generally works at the kiosk or the ranger station, as you can kind of see to the left. Um, you know, you're going to be uniformed, you're going to be that friendly face saying hello, um, you're going to be collecting maybe a, a, um, a parking fee, uh, and it really just varies on the park. Uh, we do, I believe, have a park aid even available at the uh, state capitol. So if anyone is interested in applying and working at the state capitol and get your, get your foot in the door and working at the, uh, at the museum down there, apply. The job's posted online, park aid in Sacramento. Um, another way to start, as I mentioned, as a maintenance aid, you're going to be working outdoors, uh, working on park restoration projects, keeping the bathrooms clean. Um, it's entry level, great way to start. Forestry aid, um, you know, maybe you studied at least 15 units of 
you know, cultural resources, natural resources, and you want to work outdoors and doing a forestry type of position, uh, being a forestry aid is a great way to go. And if we have anyone that is taking college courses right now, uh, we have a student assistant available at headquarters. So you can work seasonally, you're part-time, you're getting paid while you're also going to school and you can get college credits for this position. Uh, it's listed online. Would highly encourage those of you that are students to apply. Uh, and occasionally we'll have internships. Um, generally, these are done um, kind of at each park throughout the, the, the state. So it's not really a generalized system. Uh, and we have many more positions, guide trainees, park interpretive specialists. Um, but uh, again, all of these, you don't need any exam. You can apply um, and, and bypass that exam system and get your, get your career started at California State Parks. So, of course, connect with our team if you have any questions about what works. If you go to livetheparkslife.com, there's a pop up where it asks for your email. Add your email address in there if you are serious about working at parks. We will email you every Tuesday a list of our openings. And, uh, and it's a great way to kind of see okay, here's a featured opportunity in my area, or hey, this assessment is now available. Um, so, also, I mean, you can connect with us on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook as well, CA State Parks Jobs. Um, so now I will go ahead and connect with Princess if there's any questions. Thank you so much, David. Um, this is such good information. Um, I did have a question come through. I think it was answered, to be honest, um, but um, just want to make sure. Are there any remote positions um, available and what might be those titles that you would recommend? Yeah, good question. Good question. So there isn't one universal telework system, right? So there isn't one that says, hey, these classifications are telework. Um, the way it works is each unit, so each small little unit uh, is uh, can vary. So the hiring manager determines what that telework option looks like. Um, classifications that will generally be or generally offer that, though, generally, um, would be an office technician. A lot of those are working hybrid. Um, the staff services analyst, a lot of those are working hybrid. Associate governmental program analysts, a lot of those are hybrid. Personnel specialists, a lot of those are hybrid. Um, but, uh, accountant trainee, a lot of those are, are hybrid. So uh, the answer to the question is to look at the job bulletin um, and if it's not listed, you could reach out to the hiring manager because that contact is listed right there. You can call and say, hey, I'm really interested. I just kind of want to see what the schedule is, is for this position. Um, and that's the best way to get the information. The one thing I would suggest, though, is if you come off demanding and like, I don't even want to apply if it's not, then <laughs> and you don't have a good shot of landing the job. So make it to where you just want to see like, hey, like, I mean, have a good attitude. Don't make it like. Hey, I'm not even applying if there's no telework. Um, so, but you could reach out to the contact listed on the job bulletin. Would you say that most of the positions are transitioning back into the work? I mean, so, you know, I mean, back into the, you know, office, um, or how do you see that affecting your agency? Um, good question. A lot of the positions that I went over, other than the analyst series, are. Um, in the field, a lot of those you are going to be like working outdoors in the field. You're, like, you're not going to be at home on your computer. Um, but as far as the analyst series goes, um, you know, there is no uh, official telework policy that says, hey, you have to work this many days in the office and this many days at home. It's really just what your manager is comfortable with. I can tell you, um, you know, generally with headquarters, I'm at headquarters right now. Um, a lot of people are going to telework probably at least, you know, multiple days a week for uh, the foreseeable future. Okay, good, good to know. Um, and then there, you know, with our population, um, some students do have experience outside the United States. And so how do you suggest that they put that on their application to show that they have, like, is it acceptable? Is it not? What do you say? 
I would list anything that you've done. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, Princess, any um, yes. educational background, like you have to, um, you know, have it translated, that sort of thing. But as far as work experience, add that on your application. Um, you know, anything that you've done, add that on there to show maybe it was volunteering at a different in a different country, or maybe, you know, you were an accountant in a different country, but you haven't yet, um, you know, been able to do that over here. Add anything that you've done on your application. Thank you so much. Um, so in essence, any experience is relevant to the job that you're applying for. I mean, that you, sh you should put it down, basically. Yeah, as far um, as it is, yeah, I add anything that you've done. I mean, we always say like, you know, whatever it is, even if it's volunteering, add that on your application. Um, and that can be counted as relevant, relevant experience. Um, when they say exam, some people are like really afraid um, or assessment. Um, what should one expect maybe for those entry level like office technician jobs or um, are, are they still, you know, self-assessed or are they actually exam exams like proctored? Yeah, so every exam is completely different, right? So, okay, so the best way to look through and say, okay, what's going to be on this exam if I click on executive secretary and I go to apply now and I want to obtain eligibility I can find the exam bulletin right here if it's available okay mm -hmm. to kind of reduce that anxiety and I would encourage you to look through here so that goes straight to the exam but look through the bulletin because this will tell you exactly everything about the exam who can take it um, if you meet the minimum qualifications um, and then generally it'll give you an exam scope so this is like okay what is even going to be on this exam so you kind of get a preview of the exam right here um, and then sometimes I'm not sure if it's on this one but sometimes it'll also give uh an additional preview of what to expect on the exam. So study the exam scope for whatever position it is and um, study the preview, read the entire example of it. So you kind of know, okay, this is what I can prepare for. This is, you know, I can spend some time brushing up on anything that it's asking, right? Um, so it's kind of the best answer I can give you um, because again, every exam, for each of these jobs is going to be a little bit different, right? So if I go to um, environmental scientists and I want to take the exam, I can look through here and I can say, oh, cool. It has all this information, okay? And the cool thing about this one is that it has an exam scope. So I can see this is training and experience. So it's gonna be uh, based on my experience and I can see a preview, right? So the cool thing about one like this is I can be like, okay, what's gonna be on the exam? Just give me a preview of what to experience, uh, expect. So I hope that answered the question. Yes, it did. Thank you. This is awesome. So we have like, you guys have generalized that are uh, classifications that are used or positions that are used amongst more, uh, you know, other state agencies that kind of do similar work. Um, for example, the staff services analyst or like a manager position, where would someone go to see the specifics? And maybe you already showed this, but just want to make sure like the specific, what they would be actually be doing in that job specifically. Yeah. Good question. And again, I mean, these like, so entry level staff services analysts, right? I'll click on this one. The, the duties are so different job to job. Like this one, for instance, is going to be, well, first of all, you can get an idea by just reading the, the first couple paragraphs. Okay. But, you know, going to the duty statement, this little duty statement, which can be found on the job bulletin, tells you exactly what the job is doing. Okay, so you can see, I mean, 30% of this job, you're going to require close working relationships with staff from the department and communities throughout California. You can kind of get into more of that. 20%, you're going to develop and distribute training flyers, conduct and facilitate leadership trainings at state parks. Um, 
you know, assist in public contacts, facilitate and implement leadership training programs. Um, so definitely would want to look at the duty statement. Again, every one of these jobs is different. This is just the government classification, right? So even though it's a staff services analyst, we don't even call those once you're hired. We wouldn't call you a staff services analyst. Um, or you a community engagement specialist. Okay, so not to confuse you, but this is just the government working classification, which means there's the exam or assessment for this job. Uh, and this there's a pay range that you get in this classification. Then once you're hired, then you'll be called a community engagement specialist. So um, not to confuse you too much, but uh, but each of these is totally different, right? Um, and again, that goes for office technicians. Some of our office technicians are not just working, you know, behind a, a, an office. Some of them are out volunteer, uh, in charge of all the volunteers in a park. So you definitely want to explore um, each of these jobs because everyone's totally different. Okay. Sounds good. So if they feel like they meet the minimum qualifications for a staff, like in this case, let's just say staff service analyst or an office technician, then they should just um, I've definitely take the exam um, and then go searching and pretty much click on every single one of them because they are very, very different or could be uh, vastly different. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. That's what I encourage you to do. And again, if you are the type of person that is just ready to work, um, you know, park aid, or maintenance aid, those are the best ways to start. Give you an example. Um, well, this one is in Rio Vista, which is considered Sacramento County, but um, each of these can be different as well, right? So the park aids, explore these. You know, this one is the one that's working uh, at the California State Capitol Museum. Um, and, you know, just to give you an idea, some of these aren't just collecting, you know, working the kiosk. Some of them are actually assisting with public education programs and um, I mean, a variety of things. So um, the best entry level is definitely to come in as a park aide. Oh, how old do you have to be to work at uh, the California, I mean, at your agency or just the state of California? Uh, yeah, so I, it's 18, it's 18. Perfect. Um, somewhere I heard that uh, some of our parks will accept 16, but I uh, generally 18 years and, and older. Okay, that's good. I mean, all of our students are 22 and over. I just wanted to ask um, just out of curiosity because our students have children. So you never know, um, you know, this is also going to get the word out to them as well. So um, perfect. And then just FYI, I'm reading right here on the screen. It says priority consideration will be given to any person receiving state public assistance. So if you're on a CalWORKs program, um, that is just more incentive for you to actually apply um, in my eyes, um, if this is something in a career you want to go down. Absolutely. And to kind of uh, speak to the last thing is that um, almost all of our seasonal part-time jobs are uh, are given priority to CalWORKs, uh, to the CalWORKs program. So you'll see m almost every maintenance aid and park aid, um, you know, if you're on that program, you will get preference. Uh, for everyone, um, the Center for Workforce Solutions does help you on your resume. We help you with your state applications, getting your profile all set up. But it's really, really important that you start um, really developing a list of um, your, you know, your first choice employers. You know, we, we say five to ten. Um, if this is one of them, please sign up. Um, to receive job opportunities um, and exam notifications. Because again, you have to be on an exam list to, to actually apply for the job opportunity. So, all right. Well, thank you, David. Appreciate your time. Thank you everyone for joining us. We'll talk soon. And um, yeah, thank you again.